um, welcome to IT Learn. We are in the first session for entry to IT. We're going to start with talking about what are the topics that we will be covering in this training um, that is spread across two days. So we're doing a two-day training for almost four hours each day. Um, while I say four hours, we will be taking a scheduled break for about 10 minutes, uh, at least a couple of them in this four hours. Uh, so we'd have kind of three sessions. Each session we will try and um, accomplish to cover certain topics that will help you to get your feet ground, um, grounded very well into the IT industry. Before I get started, I want to know a little bit more about you. I have a few poll questions and I want you to participate in taking them, please. Uh, you'll see the first poll question coming on your screen. Uh, and I just launched it. Can you all uh, submit your votes there? This is basically to know who you are, where you are in your IT career currently. Either you are uh, working full time or you're someone who's new to it. So you have your options there. I'm going to keep the poll for another five seconds and close it. I request everyone to take it. All right, there we go. Um, I'm going to close and share the results on your screen. So team, almost 50% of you are absolute beginners to IT. So that's um, the audience to which I will be addressing. The pace at which I will conduct these lectures um, will be assistive to beginners uh, more than advanced. So this first two days of the training, we will be going extremely slow, but we will be learning a lot of the basic concepts. Uh, we have about 20% of you got some IT exposure, 27% of you are trained, but not into the IT job market yet. I have a 7% um, audience who are working in IT currently. So that's a good distribution. I'm looking forward to see how we could uh, build your skill in a very structured environment. So I'm going to hide this and launch one more poll team. Two more actually before we go back to the topics. This is just to know where you reside, which country you reside in, please. Great, thank you. I'm going to close this poll and share the results. Um, so team, I have almost 94% of you from US, Canada. I just have 6% of you from UK, Europe. This is the distribution of um, who the audience is. Most of the members are from the US. I did expect a lot of people to join from India, either in the class or online, but I don't think there's any audience right now. Uh, great. Last poll before I uh, start talking about the topics, please. All right, great. I'm going to close this poll as well. Almost all of you have submitted and I'm sharing the results with you all. So 50% of you are already IT LIN members. Thank you so much for continuing to join our webinars and use this learning platform. Uh, the other 50% are either uh, not yet or you're planning to be. So great. This is good to know for uh, me to be able to continue forward. Uh, let's now look into what we want to do in, as part of this webinar team. I hope you can see the screen back to the Google Drive. So one of the first things I did team, and I'm going to walk you through how we're going to be working on, is to document whatever we're doing in a simple Google document. Now, I will assume that most of you have no prior knowledge and I will kind of explain things as I move forward. Google Drive is an online storage place. So if you have a Gmail account, 
you could just go to drive.google.com and you can use it like your uh, local desktop Windows Explorer. So for example, if I open my Windows Explorer, I have all the folders and files, but they are my local directly. They are not there over the internet. What Google Drive does is it helps you to maintain a similar folder structure, but over the cloud. So once I keep these documents out there, I am able to access them from any location in the world. The reason things like Google Drive is very important for your team is when you work in IT, it is all about documentation. It is all about documentation and data. Documentation basically gives us the ability to talk about what is it that we want to do, our plan, our approach, our movement in the project. When it comes to data, it is how we interpret data, how we fetch the information and display it. So that becomes your data part of it. For your documentation in data, you have teams that may be spread across either in the same office locally, it could be in different floors in the same building, or it could be across uh, different countries and continents. While you have those timing challenges, you need a central repository to store information that is shareable. So Google Drive helps you to do that. All you have to do is using your Google account, go to drive.google.com. The first thing I did is I created, clicked on this plus new and added a folder. That is where I wanna be able to document everything. So this entry to IT is the folder that I created in my drive. My drive becomes the main folder where everything is stored. Within this, there's entry to IT. All the documentation that we will start doing, we'll start putting into this folder. Now this folder, I only have access to, but when I want to start sharing it, that um, is what the power of Google Drive comes to. Now is Google Drive something that is um, universally used or are there other tools that IT teams and projects use? Yes, there are many other tools, uh, but Google Drive has kind of been one uh, popular place. Once you know about documentation using Google Drive, then you can switch to other uh, IT and test management tools. It will not be tough to understand them. Now in the um, entry to IT folder, I went about creating a new document. Did someone join in? One second. Yeah, someone from the staff joined. Hi, Karthik. Good morning. Venkat here. Hi, good morning. Venkat, can you go on mute, please? Yeah, sure. Thank you. So, entry to IT is the folder, and in this, I created new Google Doc. So, this is the folder we created, and now I created Google Doc. It is very important, team, to know all the features of Google Doc. All right. This is exactly similar to your Microsoft Word that you get access to. So if you have Office, uh, Microsoft Office, then you can uh, use Microsoft Word too. The reason I'm focusing a little bit more on Google Docs is it will give you all the power, almost all the power of Microsoft Office and Microsoft Word, uh, but it will give you the ability to share, collaborate, um, and do it in a distributed team atmosphere as well. So the most important thing team is to start talking about what is it that we're documenting, how we should document it in a very structured manner. If you look at uh, project documents, it may start with a page that is just introducing it, then an index page where you can click on that line and go to that specific pages. So those documents are built using templates, but I'm starting with a very simple, basic laid out template, and we will start to work additional on that. Now team, entry to IT is the Google document that I created. This will help me to document information as text or numbers and so on, but more like a free flowing text. 
Now, there are a lot of features that you will see that you could uh, apply as you go through each and every uh, feature of it. Now, the first thing I did is created a title for this, saying that this is my main thing. And I could start to make it a little bit more organized. Now, the first thing I did is increase the font size team. This is my heading, right? The reason we need different font sizes in a document is so that the readers, the viewers eyes go automatically focused to that area. It makes things very, very easy to uh, read in a quick flow. If it is one long document, like a notepad, so let's say copy this and I put it into a notepad. Team, you all have to also master shortcuts. Okay, the window shortcuts and Mac shortcuts, that is essential. Now, what is the difference that you primarily can make immediate um, view on these two documents? There's one notepad that saves your files as .txt on your local machine. And there's the other Word doc type Google doc that can save it as .doc. The main thing in this is styling and how we can use additional uh, features into it. Now, the only things I can do here in a notepad, which is one of the most simplest way to document things and still a great quick option is to use spaces and so on. But what if I want to organize it more? Let's talk, talk about like this. Entry to IT is my main one, right? So if I select this text and I want to increase or decrease the font size, I use keyboard shortcuts, but we should also be able to see them here. So let's say I want to make this as 24 and I don't want Arial. I want to, let's say, use Calibri. But if I use this font and only selected that text, see this, this font still remains to be Arial. So if you want to use a standard font across your documentation, then do a control A and change the font, please. We're not changing the size. Sizes are individually present. Now, what is it the main heading for this is entry to IT? Let's put it in between. And let's put a subtitle to this. Right. Um, since it's a subtitle, what will happen is um, I, I can't use the same font size. I will go lower. So if you select the text, hold your control and shift key and use the less than arrow just above the space bar, you will be able to reduce the font size. See, do you see what's happening here? So you can be able to control it without having to move your mouse a lot. Um, what differentiates a regular IT person from someone who's uh, much more liked in the team? And one of the finest points team is the speed at which you can deliver things. See what happens is in a given eight hour day, in a given 40 hour shift per week, there are members who do some superhuman kind of jobs and there are others who are still catching up. Where do they lose their time? Where do they really lose time? They're losing time the, the smallest task, so you break your entire eight hour into an one hour project work. That one hour is broken down into a 10 minutes activity. That every 10 minutes is still broken down into a second. What quickly can you do in a second? So if I can write this text in three seconds, or, and you can write it in six seconds, now you multiply it. You'll see already that 50% faster, 100% um, faster than the other. I want you to learn this shortcut team. The reason I mentioned this is if I needed to do the same thing of reducing this font by selecting this and going, taking my mouse over here and then trying to select, right? I will lose much more time. And this small task will at the end of the day says who is really delivering, who's really grown and grow in IT. Now, if you observe just to do a center so that entry to IT will come into the center, what did I do? Team? I used a tab space. So I hit tab key on my keyboard to do something called as indentation. 
So each time you hit a tab, you're indenting. What is it that I wanted to do actually? To put entry to IT into the center of this document. So I'm going to select these two lines and out here, and I actually don't, now I see, see, Control Shift E is alignment, shortcut to it. What about this? Control Shift Left, Control Shift Right. This is Control Shift Center Line E. So what are these alignments team? It is your text alignment. Your text can be left aligned or all the way right aligned, or it could be center aligned. So instead of using tabs, use the alignment for that specific text. Don't do a control A and then do the alignments because what will happen? Every text will come into it. You don't want to do that. Just select the text that you want to align and put it in there. A beginner level program to IT industry. Now, we're focusing on just the first two lines still, team. Does it look good? Does it look aligned? Entry to IT seems to be perfectly center aligned, but what happened to the second line? The reason is just like entry to uh, IT text earlier, we use tabs here, team. We're not supposed to use the tab, and that's why it happened. So now they seem to be both center aligned. I may want to underline the main one, so let's just do a control U. So the shortcuts team, I want you to remember, please. As you keep working, practice on shortcuts too. I want you all to start doing some documentation the way I'm showing you. Now, let's say I just don't want it to be bold. I could change it. If I want to italicize it, I could use Control I. So all these shortcuts are for the same features that you see up. Okay. Now I've underlined it, put it as bold, and um, also made it italicized. Now what I will do is I'm going to select this, this one and change the color. Where do I see color? Oh, there you go. This is my text color. Since we're very corporate kind of a work, uh, our documentation will have subtle colors. But if you look at Microsoft Word or Google Docs, it's not just used for um, IT industry. There are every kind of uh, career, um, and the different industries that use them, right? From individual artists all the way to um, the uh, political people. So you see computer in every hand. Now each one could use different color stylings. What you need to focus is something which is more subtle and the typical colors that are used in IT industry are black, blue, red, green. So we stand with the RGB colors as much as we can. I'm going to make this um, text below into a blue uh, shade. That gives a, um, how do you say, contrast between the main heading and then the subtitle to it. Now let's go down. This is all central line. I don't need all of them central line. This is at the top of this document. Now the other thing you need to note, team, are the margins. Okay. What you see out here is the starting of the margin, okay? While you have a lot of white space on the left and on the right, and your white space out here, these margins are there for what purpose do you know, team? Why doesn't it go all the way stretch? Primarily for print, when you give it, your printer will leave certain margin before it prints. So that margin gets captured. If you're printing an image, you'll stretch it all the way. Now, I want to be able to write what are the main topics that we will cover. So one second, team. Sorry, team, <clears throat> I had to quickly grab some water. I'm going to clean up this document a little bit more. Team, if you noticed, I am focusing a lot on this minute, small details. That is going to be the essence of this training, not just to entry to IT, but the upcoming 
uh, session on automation as well in Java. So uh, let's talk. I'm going to delete this and start fresh with what are the topics that we will cover as part of this training. So this is my next heading, right? I know that I'll have a few topics. To be able to note them, how do I say? So the best way to do team is to put numbering to them. So you can either use numbers or you can use bullets or you can use even alphabets. There's a combination of things that you could apply. There are Roman numbers, there are digital numbers, there are numbers with alphabets and so on. Now, what I intend to say is, let us say in topics in day one, I'm planning to cover certain things like Google Doc, okay, uh, slash word. I also want to cover a um, little bit of Excel slash, what does uh, Google Drive call it? Let's see, new Google Sheets. It's calling this uh, Microsoft Excel as Google Sheets. Very similar to it. Right. And after that, we may also want to look at a little bit on PowerPoint. Because end of the day, each IT individual will have to give a presentation. What does PowerPoint do? What does Word do? When do you use Word? When do you use PowerPoint? When do you use a spreadsheet or an Excel sheet? This is what we will quickly look at. And in Google Drive, I believe it's called as Google Slides. Do you see this? These are the three main things. There are a lot more features that can be added, but let's focus on these three. Okay, Google Slides. Now, does my text look good? It doesn't, it looks a little unorganized. And let us say this is day one topics. Then I have day two also, correct? So instead of rewriting the whole thing, what I'll do is copy paste. Your control C, control V helps you again fasten your speed of operations. So day two, what is it that I'll do? I don't know yet. Let us say, I'll just put this here. I definitely want to talk about web development. Use end HTML, CSS. I'm not great on CSS, but we can together quickly take a look. HTML is absolutely basic, so it is easy to get started. Uh, but CSS is something that will require you to understand how the style sheets work. Um, I also plan to talk about tools like um, some test management. Maybe Jira. Um, to look at how we can do some amount of test management and defect management. We can also look at Trello briefly to talk about project management and how we create tasks and organize them in different buckets. Uh, that will give you some good exposure. And any odd should be something that uh, we can definitely look into because it's a good test management tool. Now team, one of the main intense here while it is an entry to IT all of these topics are very much specific to uh, anyone in IT our focus will slowly go towards test automation that is where um, we will be going into the advanced training entry to IT as is is suitable for anyone getting into IT uh, but for test automation we will do much more specialized focus after we're done now let's talk about aligning these things Topic seems to be a main heading for me. So I'm going to do a control V and increase the font a little bit to maybe 14. Okay, some standard numbers will put it. Okay, now day one is my first heading, right? So all these are bullets. So the way I'll do it is I'm going to hit it as one. And under day one, I have these. So this becomes my sub bullets. So this helps to uh, sort things and organize them very, very well. And the way I see things, having been in the industry for a long time, is I look at uh, team members and see how they do documentation. I focus a lot on 
if that individual can do this basic task in a very very disciplined manner then yes i will rely on them for future any questions team so far anything that um i can guide you on yes i will talk about test management tools we'll talk about manual testing how do we write test cases any questions everyone so far so good all of you are comfortable assuming it if you do have a question uh, please put it up in the chat for us thank you this is recording yes cool so now see how i'm organizing it this is my main topics and i want uh, the day one to be either under it or this is fine well organized this is three bullet points under day one okay getting started with basic ms office google drive now i need day two to look exactly like the format of day one now let us say i can even do a little bit i won't use too much coloring team it'll take away the essence but i will just make it italicized okay so what i did is i hit control i and it gave this kind of a shape let us say i change the color also i'll tell you what i'm trying to do okay let me change this to green right now actually it's not even visible it's almost looks like black but that's fine should i bold it if i bold it then hmm, looks better now here is my challenge do i have to do the same thing to day two the selected text can you all give me an answer yes or no over the chat what i did on day one should i do it on day two also is it supposed to be done yes how do you do it do i have to manually again do everything like select the color italicize it uh, put it as this how do we do it team? that's called format painter this text has specific format to it right a color a font size a font itself italics and so on it also has a bullet i want the same format to be applied to this line the way i do is you select this line by double clicking then you click on this format painter what it does is it copies this format now i will double click it on day two actually gave it for only one word let's do it again select that entire text control shift c oh no this is a different one control shift what there's no shortcut in this for this i've copied it now i will paste it by selecting it to the entire line so there comes the entire format see automatically it has given it as a number two it has got the color the font everything so the styling has been copied team now what we are doing is in a google document or a microsoft document in a similar way a better representation of this becomes your html page where you try and show information uh, but how you represent it is uh, much more different on a web page and that is where comes a little bit of coding that's a basic uh, starting level for us i'm going to do the same format painter for the next sub bullet points too okay copy it and i'm going to apply it here see i have a lot of tabs because the tabs came from earlier if i go in the same flow of doing it step by step from beginning i wouldn't have this tabs but now we'll clean it up so here comes uh, a representation of what we're trying to do. Let me continue to do the same for day three and four. The best way for me to is to call, control C, copy the whole thing, and paste it. See, I lost the number here, so I have to get that number. How do I get that number? Okay, this is how it came. I'm gonna again copy this format painter and apply it to this right now luckily 
this has changed to day four as well automatically. So there are certain things that Google Docs and Microsoft document, uh, Microsoft Word are smart enough to understand as to what the user is doing, but they will not assume everything. So you have to consistently keep giving your direction. So day three, what is it that I want to get started once we have some basic idea of software testing? I'm going to delete this and write it. Okay, day three. Programming. Let's start with programming on day three. And what we're going to touch is both Java, a little bit of J unit, and test ng. This would take us easily about four to five hours team. I'm going to focus a lot on the basic fundamentals of programming. <clears throat> Java as an overall learning can even take about, you know, two, three weeks. It can take 20, 25 hours, depending on the depth and how you're getting into. What we're doing is to ensure that you get the most important fundamental concepts of programming in core Java. You should be able to understand even some pro concepts like um, SQL and DBMS. What are RDBMS and database management system? What are these? To get some basic idea of how data flows, that becomes very important too. I will also want to touch on Python. Once we spend enough time in understanding one programming language, the syntax and the format of how we I'm sorry, how we write Java, learning another programming language will not be tough. There are subtle differences in how the main keywords, the programming syntax is used and what the advantages are for one over the other. It should be fairly much easier. I think we should be able to get a good grasp of Python in about two hours, having done good amount of Java. Um, then comes my day four. So if I hit, I get D as the fourth bullet point. If I do shift tab team, that is going back indentation. That's left indent or your decrease in the indent. It will automatically get you the number four because it's all now looking at how I'm tabbing. Okay. Now my day four is going to be all about building automation frameworks using Selenium and Java. All right. We will talk about all the frameworks in the state. Decomposition, functional decomposition, functional decomposition, linear, data-driven, H object model and H factory. And a combination of one or more of these becomes your hybrid frame. We're trying to accomplish a lot in a short period that requires, you know, focus learning for three, four hours a day is not easy. To, um, in fact, from a teaching perspective, also. It is not, but this is the flow in which we'll be going. And um, for any of you who's a member, you would also have the video access so you can go back and repeat it. I just want you all to take it very easily. Don't try and be in a rush or a hurry for knowledge acquisition. It will happen. So stay focused on the fundamentals that I'm teaching, please. Now I want to make sure that the formats are correct. I can select both the lines and format painter and put it for these lines. Again, copy it and put it for these. So when it comes to Word or Google Docs, these are the few things that are important for you to know. So if you join an IT job and you ask to make a documentation, would you want to create such a documentation or something like this, right? It, immediately gives an impression about you. So team, I want you all to start um, creating documentations in a Google Drive at your end and start doing the same, please. Take your notes in a Google Drive, 
on notepad, but organize them as you keep going along. Any questions, team, as to what we're going to be covering and so on? I can only see a part of the document because I need to scroll for it. There's one additional feature that is to just minimize the entire menu bar. So if I click on this, I get a little larger view. Any questions, team? All right, great. So um, going back to this topic team, I may give a break in about five minutes uh, and we will rejoin this webinar. Uh, but let me kind of give you a summary of what we're trying to do this. All this will be free webinar. Um, no, actually, um, there's the day one, day two are the free webinars. The day three and day four are for the members only. All right, great. So now, what else is there that we can do in a Google document? All right, now let's talk about day one. Now we can go into the next page. Okay. This is the next page. Okay, there you go. I have to too many enter keys. So this is the last line of the first page. This is the first line of the next page. Now let's talk about uh, putting some information. I just want to see what all we can do in word okay let's talk about inserting images that's one let's talk about tables let us talk about header and footer what they are what else can i do what else can i do in word let's put tables is there images are there there are i think you can also put videos but i'm not too sure about it just images links yeah hyperlinks i can do that table of content how to create a table of content. Table of content is very similar to this, but it is clickable. So when you click on it, you go to that specific page where that information is. You have table of content, you have images, tables, header and footer. Let us start with the header and footer first, please. What is a header? What is a footer? We are in the first page here. This is page one, correct? Let me minimize the font. So I can so I like zoom, zoom out to 100%, I can see much more clearer. There is the space above entry to IT, white space. And there is also space out here, even after the last line. Let us say this last line, okay, some random text. There is space out here, that's your header and footer. When we're documenting certain things, at times, we want the same information to continue across every page. Let us say you have a 50 page document. You want to put something that goes across all 50 pages. That is your header and footer. So how do you insert them? We, we basically term it as inserting header and footer. <coughs> yep, links. Sure. You go to, okay, where's my menu bar? Menu bar has disappeared, so I will get it back. Uh, it should be either under insert or view. Okay, view is just the view, there you go. Do you see these team? We have image, table, drawing is, I'm just kind of an image, chart, oh, horizontal line, nice footnote. Special characters, equation. Okay, I I don't I've never used them here. Anything to do with equations, I will go to a Google Sheet or an Excel sheet. Header and page number, page document breaks, documenting links, comments. That's interesting one thing. This is something that will really help us to collaborate. I'll talk about comments as well. Some of these I'm showing you in a quick way, but as we keep going in, in our approach, in our trainings. I'll keep using same Google Docs, spreadsheets, and so on. Table of contents, perfect. I have everything out here. Let's go one by one, okay? Header and page number. See, I can put a header, a footer, a page number, and a page count, okay? This is really um, something that you will see very, very frequently in a corporate world. What do they put as a header, and what do they put as a footer? Header is typically representing the logo or some kind of a strong name of the organization. 
So let's talk about header and I'm going to insert something in there. This is the header. So in the header, I can write, let us say, IT either. Right? And I want to write a line, put it all the way to the right side. Maybe a little bigger. I won't bold it, but a little bigger. Now, did you notice, team? There's one blunder that will happen. Everything in my document is in Calibri, but this is in Arial by default. So you might want to and keep ensuring that you check on fonts. <clears throat> I've worked a lot in IT sales team. So I've been creating proposals uh, to RFPs. Request for proposal is what clients send us. And we sit down and create a detailed proposal document. And that goes through review, multiple reviews within the organization. And they're so critical about it that even if I use one place, a font different from what is standardly being used, they, would be, they wouldn't like it. So that it's very disciplined, structured uh, industry team. That is where we have to ensure that our base is very, very solid on these sides, okay? So make sure each and everything is rightly aligned. Now see, I put itln.com out here. Let's just scroll down to the next page. The same thing is getting carried forward here. Why is it that then we have footer also, right? In this, let me put an image. Where have the ITLN logo? Image somewhere on the local desktop. Let me check team. Or I can go to Google, search for ITLN logo, download it. Okay, and team, the other thing, very important is Google search. I definitely want to talk about it either today or tomorrow. These are the topics to uh, cover, team. All right. We may go slow during certain days. We may speed up during the other sessions. Uh, but definitely, we have to make sure that all these are present. I'm going to take the IT little logo. So I think I can just save image as. I hope it will save the bigger version. I'll call it IT learn. And putting it, just dumping it on my desktop for now, team. I would typically keep it much more organized. But just one image for now locally. So I'm just taking that. IT learn. And team, I want you to start being familiarized with different file formats. This is PNG. Actually, I don't even remember the full form of PNG. But typically, you'll see for images, JPEG, GIF, if there's a movement in it, and PNG. There's also bitmap.bmp that you can create. But usually, you'll see JPEGs and PNGs being used a lot in the IT industry. Great, so I'm going to save this. I've saved it. So now I can go back to my document. I want to go to the header. So if I double click on it, I should be able to um, do it. Now I want to insert the image. Let's see, insert. Upload from computer, yes. Uh, desktop, cool. Open. There you go. So this is my logo. It's got within the image white background. Please note this. See this, what you see here. Okay, the space is within the image. So I can't delete that. It's an image. I cannot edit it. All I could do is resize it or move it to anywhere else. Okay, so let's say I want to center a line. So I can put it in the center. Can I get this text besides it? Let's see. Oopsie. I caught it besides it. But I don't need the text anymore now, correct? I can just keep the logo. And I can increase the size of this. The easiest way to is just to drag it from one corner. If you drag it from the side, you stretch it the, and it will lose its orientation. So you need to maintain the X and Y uh, dimensions. So I'll do it undo, control C. And if I need to increase it, always pull it from the corner. So that way you can uh, control it. Now here's the logo of the company. Too big, so it'll kill my space everywhere. 
So every page, now if you go down, I'm just doing page down. See, every page I'm losing so much space. That's fine for now, but we will clean up later. Get the better image, put it correctly, so it will um, change that. Let's talk about the footer now. What is it that you want to put in footer? For footer, right, there are a lot of things that typically get used. One is page numbers, which page are we in, out of how many pages. Second is confidentiality of the document type. So this documents, when we submit, it is known for a specific use. The classifications are basically, is it for internal use only? Is it uh, for commercial use? Is it for public use? Or is it a private document? So those details, sometimes we put it in footer as well. So I'm going to insert footer. Let's start, let's put a footer first, OK? I would love to put a line in the footer so I know it is there right under it. A lot of times, we also put um, the corporate address, phone numbers, and so on in the footer. So I'm going to put, where is this horizontal line? Cool. Oh, great. That looks good. That looks nicely organized. What else do I want to put? I want to put the page numbers. Let's see. See, I don't want to go and write each page number manually. Why? Because anytime you insert a new page, let's say you have a 50-page document, you put something in the 30th page, create a new page, you have to change all the numbers. Let them come automatically. So page number, there's something that's showing. Let's see. Ah, there you go. See? One, two like that. One, two in the bottom. Or should it, where, where did it, uh, do, do we want it? So it's giving us four format types. How about page count? Is that second page? I thought that's the first page. Hello. Oh, this is total pages. Now I got it. The total pages, total page, just this. And we're going to insert page number the way it should. I'm going to use this. Hello. By my tabbing, I'll write line it. How about I do it like this? This is total pages, right? Of this. And uh, right align this now. Center, why is it doing only center? Why is it going to the right? Maybe there's something after this, yeah. Slowly getting it to the corner. Now let's see if this is right. So this is one of two, this is two of two. What if I hit a new page? Logos come and three of four, Four of four. That way I know which page I am out of how many pages, right? So um, I've used both page count and page numbering to get that. I can also put the other information like, uh, let me insert one line here. And I'll center a line this text now. Confidential for training purpose. Whatever information that we want to standardly put for a document as part of a team, because team, you're not going to work on one document. You'll have a library of collaterals that you'll keep accessing. So this is um, a good start where you can have a good header and footer. I don't like the size of this. I'm going to quickly change it. Let's see images. I'll get something that is. Where do I get? I feel a logo. Mm, this is also square. This, I don't know. This looks a little broken. Skewed, rather. I'm going to try this, though. Logo. 
go to okay and let me see if i can look at that so i'm going to insert another image why so many clicks and see if i can resize this so that it looks much more better yeah much better let's put it to the right so it's not disturbing our view too much is there space about this see now comes the margins team for the header and footer see there's still white space right i'm going to reduce that further it's just drag drop that i'm using all right do i want to put a horizontal line after that is a question let's put it let's see now that's my header that's my footer all right great so at least um, we got started with doc word document um google doc let's um take about 10 minutes break team can we all rejoin um at 9 15 am ist all right i'll start the session back in about 10 minutes just take a 10 minutes break and come back to you same link same thing uh, join back in about 10 minutes everyone thank you all i know